We're going to talk about capnography. Um, every unit has capnopods available. They should be available in the Pixis. If they're not, usually the unit managers have them in their office somewhere. Um, but if you find that it's an issue with um, being able to access them, make sure to let those unit managers know. Uh, but the first place you want to look for the capnopod is in the Pixis on the units. The capnopod snaps on the back of any Space Labs monitor. So any unit that uses Space Labs monitor can be used to monitor capnography. Just pops on just like that. Um, to get the capnopod off the monitor, you just push the gray button on top and release. I have seen where if you don't push the gray button, you can pull hard enough to get it to release. But that's because the plastic broke. So please use that lovely little gray button right there. It comes right off. Um, if you are in an ICU or unit with one of the larger Space Labs monitors, the side looks exactly the same, but it's actually its own module. So it's going to be a square the same way that the modules are that slide on the side of the monitor. So it's going to be this size right here. When you put your capnopod on, if you do not have a filter, you will start getting an alarm. This alarm right here saying, I need a filter. Snap that filter in, and first your green light will illuminate and that alarm will stop. This is a no moisture bacteriostatic no line filter. What that means is that it is multi-patient use. So you don't have to worry about bacteria from one patient getting to another. When it is time to change this filter, this green light will turn red. So you don't have to date and time or keep track of it, anything like that. Um, what I do recommend is that when you are done using the capnopod A, you want to return it to the Pixis so the next person knows where to find it. Um, but you can go ahead and just take that filter, wipe them down, and put them away together so that the next time somebody goes to use them, you already have that filter and you don't have a drawer somewhere filling up of these half-use filters because those aren't very helpful. Okay. I have my cabinet pot on the monitor, I have my filter in place, I now am going to look to my supplies. So you have three different options to monitor capnography and you want to use your nursing judgment to decide which one is best for that patient because all of them are available to you. So we have our nasal nasal filter, so one nasal cannula delivers action, the other one collects end tidal. So this I would put on my patient. The other end goes to the monitor. I have two ends here. One is my lure lock to go into my filter. The other is an adapter for oxygen. If my patient doesn't need oxygen, that's fine. I can just let it hang. If they do, I'm going to divide these and I can plug it into um, my oxygen connector on the wall. This does go all the way down, so even if they're spread pretty far apart, you should have the ability to get it there. Um, Okay, so that is nasal nasal. So this is best for patients that maybe aren't going to tolerate the oral component in front of their face, um, or it's just kind of preventative monitoring, so you might have it on the patient for an extended period of time. They might need to eat, do things like that. Um, units where they're doing procedures, bedside procedures like TEE, this is definitely preferred. Now we have a few other options. This is your nasal oral cannula. So I have one nasal cannula to deliver action, the other one collects end tidal, but I also have the spoon bill, which is the oral component. So if I have a patient that's a big mouth breather, this is what I want to use. Um, if I'm using my nasal nasal and they're breathing out of their mouth, you're not capturing all that. That being said, if you have someone who's kind of mildly sedated, this might bother them in front of their face and they might be in that stage where they're going to keep pulling it off. Um, so it's there's not a one-size-fits-all use the one that's most appropriate for your patient your third option is the t-tube adapter so this actually comes in two packets um, I have my t-tube adapter and my uh, extender this just lure locks in here and the other end just like the other one is going to lure lock into my filter this is to be used for patients that are intubated or draped now this is a product that you're only going to find on par in the ICUs. Um, if you are in a non-ICU unit and you need it for a trait patient, you can either call Central Supply or ask the ICU to send it to you. Okay, so those are our options as far as cannulas go. Now once we get to actually monitoring end tidal, your parameter will automatically come up when you plug in the capnopod. Give it just a few seconds, sometimes it takes about five seconds or so, um, but it will automatically come up. You notice I don't have any alarms right now. I don't have any readings right now. It does not engage until it detects a breath on your patient. So we're kind of in limbo at this moment. 
Um, as soon as it detects a breath on my patient, it will engage and will expect to keep seeing that breath. It will automatically have a no breath detected alarm if it doesn't detect a breath for, um, I believe it's 20 seconds. Now, that being said, this is a separate piece of equipment, so it doesn't have default settings like the rest of your monitor does. So it's very important when you hook your patient up, go to alarms and turn on the alarms you want activated. So I highly recommend your end title alarm, turn it on and make sure your parameters are appropriate. This um, 60 and 20 that it starts out with is pretty wide, so you may likely want to adjust that down a little bit. I'm gonna go back a page. I also have a respiration alarm. If I select respiration, I can turn my respiration alarm on and I'll have that counting as well. Um, you do have a sec separate respiration parameter on patients that are monitored on ECG on the bedside monitor. That is looking at the ECG lead movement, so that chest wall movement. End title is actually counting the exhaled breaths. So if you have your two different sources that are counting respiration, the parameter that's counting the movement and ECG leads and end title, which is counting the breaths, end title is going to be more accurate. So if you have any discrepancy, you want to default to the end title value. All right. Um, just like all the other parameters on the monitor, selecting that parameter key brings up my menu. So you saw I went into alarms and adjusted that. Um, a couple other things to keep in mind with end title is I can calibrate it if I need to. Um, I just like to calibrate and then I would zero. The thing you want to keep in mind is that if this is on a patient, you want to disconnect it from your patient before you zero it. Otherwise, it's going to zero it to your patient and then you are going to have a skew trend. Um, the module auto calibrates every 24 hours, so you really don't have to worry about that unless you are looking at those numerics and you're thinking something isn't adding up here. I want to confirm that my numbers are correct. Uh, you also have an option to compensate. So this compensation feature does is it tells the module this patient's receiving oxygen and it allows it to calculate for that. So. Um, less than three liters of oxygen, and you really don't need to worry about it. Once you hit three liters, 30 to 70% O2, which is three liters to, I believe, 14, it's up there somewhere, um, is going to be your medium compensation. All I need to do is come in. I'm in my compensation menu, O2 compensation, medium, on. Now it's going to tell it to account for that oxygen in the algorithm and give you a slightly more accurate value. Um, if you completely forget, it's not the end of the world. Your trend will still be accurate, um, but this will give you more accurate numerics. Once you get above that 70%, usually your patient's either intubated or on a non-rebreather. Um, so you're really, at that point, you kind of know breathing's an issue and capnography is usually not your top priority. So um, I really only worry about that medium compensation. Um, something else to keep in mind, so I'm going to breathe into this. So once it starts detecting a breath on a patient, I'm going to see a waveform. It's kind of hard if I don't put it on for real. So it's going to engage that alarm. As soon as it doesn't detect a breath anymore is when I'm going to get an alarm. Now, if my patient is removing this off themselves, that's good. I need to know that because I need to put it back on my patient. However, if I've removed it, I want to be able to tell the monitor to stop alarming. So you will get a feature here that you don't have in any of the other parameters, which is an acknowledge alarm key. Um, so as soon as it starts here, I will be able to actually acknowledge that alarm and put it back in this limbo state of there's no patient on the monitor. I might not have had it on quite long enough for it to detect that. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't have it on long enough to detect it. Um, but it's a little red button that pops up right here. I can show you again in just a second. Uh, the other thing you want to keep in mind is if you are doing a breathing treatment, you do not want to have this actively sampling while you're doing a breathing treatment. A couple of reasons. First, it's going to gunk up the line, um, and it's going to gunk up the filter. So it's going to make it so that this filter, this reusable filter, that can last a very long time if you treat it well, um, is going to be junk right away. So we obviously don't want to do that. The other thing is it's going to skew your trend, so now you're not going to have an accurate trend or accurate numerics. So you can take the nasal cannula off your patient and acknowledge the alarm when it stops detecting your breath. That's perfectly fine. Um, if you don't want to wrestle your patient to take this off, you can go into the setup menu 
and suspend CO2. So you could leave this cannula on your patient while you're doing your breathing treatment and just suspend CO2. Once you're done, you're gonna resume CO2. All right. Are there any questions that your group has had? No? Okay. Um, that, I think, is all we're gonna cover for a quick overview on capnography. Um, I'm Heather Atchison with Space Labs. Please contact me if you have any questions.